Is it necessary for you to question the things you don't know? No. Excuse me, doctor. Thank you. Okay, can you please move your right fingers one by one, beginning with the forefinger? Limited range. All right. Okay. Do you feel warm? Yes. I'm gonna cool you off. So you've seen the security tape from the museum? I have. You want to describe what you saw, or shall I? I saw an armed assailant take direct hits to vital areas and still manage to overpower a security detail. Did this remind you of something? White Tower was shut down over a year ago. Maybe it was something else. Maybe. But we should still prepare for the worst, however remote the possibility. So if we assume the worst, the problem becomes ours to share. Hypothetically. So then, hypothetically, what is our shared solution? Load them up. On April 26, 1986, Chernobyl reactor number four exploded. Worst nuclear power plant accident in history. The ensuing fire released a plume of highly radioactive fallout into the atmosphere. The city of Chernobyl was evacuated and has remained abandoned for over 20 years. We believe the rebels have set up their bunker in one of the buildings adjacent to the reactor complex, about two miles due east from our current position in Chernobyl city. While the site itself no longer has enough fuel to make a bomb, it has 100 times the radiation. An explosion in reactor number three would release that radiation. And now for the bad news. It appears the General Sun has gotten his hands on some of our weaponry. Here to explain, Dr. Richard Porter. In the 1960s, with war in Asia looming, the US began research into Operation Black Tower, what we've now come to call the Universal Soldier Program. A high-response, self-sustaining, quick-healing, stronger, faster soldier, fueled by high-concentrate nutritional supplements. A soldier that operates without conscience or hesitation. By freezing a human body with nitrogen-based gas, repairing it and reheating it through thyroid and pituitary augmentation, we were able to revive a recently deceased soldier and, in the process, improve them. Programmable and erasable. One that you can turn on and turn off. Deceased, as in dead? That's right. 
Five years ago, the program was suspended, or rather replaced, by a program known as White Tower. Led by Dr. Robert Collin under my supervision, White Tower sought to improve and perfect what Black Tower had introduced. Using gene therapy techniques developed during Dr. Collin's cloning research, we were able to give our unisols a DNA tune-up from the inside out. The new model was superior in every physical capacity. A virtual killing machine. The next generation unisols, or NGUs as we like to call them. There was, however, an incident in a government building. Twelve dead. Nobody injured. It was considered to be a malfunction, though I believe their temperature had not been properly moderated. We were instructed to shut down all the existing NGUs, which we did, but there was a break-in. Some things were taken, including a Series 7 model. We have reason to believe it was my former colleague, Dr. Collin. We suspect he's been continuing his studies. Colin's been operating out of Eastern Europe as a gun for hire. Gentlemen, we'll be fighting against the perfect soldier, one who is impervious to injury and pain, quicker than hell, and with a nervous system unaffected by radiation. We have four first-generation unisols that are more than capable in this type of endgame. Dismissed. You say four, Colonel. That's correct. I saw there was five. There were. Now there's four. What happened to the fifth? He's the subject of a privately funded program run by Dr. Sandra Fleming, Project Phoenix. Doing what? Behavioral modification therapy, or psychological rehabilitation, as Dr. Fleming calls it. She's trying to reintroduce him into society. He was one of the very first, but by far the best of the group. Dr. Fleming has been conducting her research in Switzerland. I think of escape. Peaceful feeling. Shame. Why do you say that? I don't know. Yes, you do. Just say the first thing that comes into your mind. I don't remember. Maybe for things I have done. What have you done, Luke? I don't know. I think he's hungry. Why don't you feed him? How do you feel? Helpless. Maybe you're feeling the weight of responsibility. It's what it feels like to grow older, Luke. Do you realize how far you've come? Two years ago, when we started this, when you first woke up, you couldn't remember the day before. My head feels full. It's just another stage in your development. We're getting there. I have forgotten our agreement, Doctor, but I haven't. Consider this my last reminder. I haven't forgotten. I've been in surgery, which appears to be quite a success. So, when will we do it? I told you I'm going to run a diagnostic. I have to guarantee the safety of my men. 